I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And a simple success podcast. And this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Thomas Edison, Isaac Newton, Alexander Graham Bell. Are we studying for an exam, DT? Or just more social status? No, I am just about to add my name to that list. Which list is this? Inventors. They all have something in common. They invented something. Well, that part I agree with. Now, what about you, DT? What have you invented? You changed everything. I have invented myself. Don't you see this magnificent discovery? Well, you have to elaborate for me on your invention for it to make logical sense, so I can see why you fit in the list. I thought I was the doubting Thomas here. Do you want my name? Who, me? Nah, you can keep your name. It suits you way better. Thanks. I like my name much better than, that. what was it, a nickname of yours? Early adopters. Yeah, the early adopters of what? Good question, DT. Early adopters of anything. But I thought our teaching leaned toward the financial side. You thought right. We all also lean toward positive thinking, which plays a huge role when it comes to financial success. Okay, why are we discussing early adopters then? What are they? First, we have to discuss a theory that will help us understand the concept better. Theory? Which theory? The theory of diffusion of innovation. Wait, wait, we are talking about innovation here, not some diffusion of it. True, but for now, let's just keep that image in our minds. You will understand it better shortly, believe me. Oh, okay. So, say you want to become an early adopter of any technology product. How do you become one? Partly by being willing to try out new things. Like what? Like a new phone or computer. Ah, do I smell another Tesla story? It may be just a new way of doing business, and I can't speak for your nose. So, what does the theory of diffusion of innovation say? Diffusion theory explains how, why, when, and at what rate a new technology is accepted. I'm listening. In the early adopter part, it's like, oh, the very leftmost part of a bell curve. Oh, yes, the famous Gaussian function, where it's mostly flat. Yes, and it hasn't begun to curve upward yet, with more users, like it does in the middle of the bell. Interesting. How many groups are there, aside from the early adopters? Um, apart from... From the early adopters, there are four more categories of people. These include innovators, which actually precede the early adopters in that they invent the thing. And then afterward? Afterward comes the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards. Ah, the technology adoption curve. Can we quickly review these categories? Of course. Innovators are those who introduce a new idea into society so that early adopters can pick it up. Think of people who bought the original Tesla Roadster back in 2009 before the company had any commercially viable cars. And the other groups or adoption choices? Early majority are those who adopt a new idea after some time has passed since its introduction. Which assumes a late majority. Yes, the late majority are those who adopt the new idea after some time passes. And finally, laggards. Laggards are those who don't adopt the new ideas of a science team until it's so popular they don't really have a choice. Oh, you mean Luddites. I don't mean the adopter community, but I'm not going there today, DT. That's all well and good, but I still don't get how it applies to me. Let's look at an example. Say you're an early adopter of new technology. You're willing to try out the new technology, and after some time, you realize that your friends use it too. In other words, I influence my friends? Yes, DT. You tell them about the new technology by your actions as well as your words. Then they start using it as well. Hmm, very helpful to new technology. It is. Your friends tell the world as well, maybe not in words, and the new technology becomes the new norm. Ah, okay. So How can I apply this to myself? The first thing we need to do is identify ourselves as being an early adopter or not. Ah, I see. I feel comfortable with new technologies. Next, ask yourself, do I enjoy keeping up with new trends in life? If the answer is yes, you're probably an early adopter. What if the answer is no? If the answer is no, then you are probably a late adopter. Great. Thanks for your help. No problem. Now, to begin with, let us define what we mean by adoption. Sure. An adoption occurs when someone starts using something new, even if they're not a so-called power user. Hmm. 
I think I understand now. Good. Now, let's take an example. Suppose you want to learn how to play guitar. You go online and search for information on how to learn guitar. You read through various websites and blogs. You even watch videos on YouTube. Sounds familiar. Isn't that what we all do these days? Yes, TT. Now, finally, you decide to purchase a book from Amazon.com. You open the book and start reading. Mm, that sounds familiar. Yes, it does. And you continue reading the book for a few days. At some point, you decide to practice playing songs on your guitar. That's great. At last. Something familiar. PPR. Practice. Persistence. Repetition. Yes, DT. You start practicing each day after work. And soon enough, you become good at playing songs. And that happens quickly, right? What do you mean? Instantly. You can play guitar or worst case in mere minutes, right? That's what the internet says. Not exactly. Now... If doing that was your definite purpose and your focus, then yes. For most situations, though, it's not quite as easy as it's sometimes made out to sound. I know it is easy, though. Right, I figured you would. You are definitely talking about... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level, or a basic intro level of just $0.99 per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there, and it's all easy. Before the break, I asked you about how being an early adopter can make me rich. And here's the answer. Innovative ideas have the potential to change our lives dramatically. And those who put their money where their mouth is, to use a familiar turn of phrase, in order to help improve it or promote it, are doing the right thing for themselves and for everybody else. For instance, consider the invention of the computer. That's right, John. Computers have changed everything. And even they are changing themselves. Indeed. Computers have have made life easier than before, and we have no idea where quantum computing might take us. Absolutely. If not for computers, I might even be a Luddite. Oh, say it ain't so, DT. Just imagine the possibilities that computers offer. I'm sure there are lots of them. There are, each with their own first world problems, but often it's the best way for the most people. Imagine you wanted to buy a new Tesla. Like most companies, <laughs> like most companies in the auto industry, they have places sort of like dealers where you can test drive the latest ones, but 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 you need a computer to buy one. That's cool. But how are you an early adopter as a result? A higher level of risk? There are a few ways to name one. My range anxiety relief tour is the best one you'll find anywhere. Right? You could say it that way, but you won't get any t-shirts from me for it. Tell us then, s'il vous plaît. Just a few months ago, I drove from California to Georgia and back in a Tesla Model 3. You did? That must have been a daunting process. All All the way, mon ami. No backup but a credit card. Why? Partly to help make this podcast even better, but also to speak directly to people's fear of not being able to do any kind of road trip in an electric vehicle. How long did it take? Same as a gas car. Four days driving each way. Same cost? No, actually, about 30% less. Electricity isn't free like some people think, but it's a sure better deal than gas. So that makes it better for investors. Sure. Getting a necessary element in whatever success is great when it's cheap. Yeah, I'd do that. I was going to say back to business, but this is the business, and we never left. As we mentioned earlier, the internet has made it easy for everyone to share their ideas. This means that businesses can tap into the wisdom of crowds. Like crowdfunding? Yeah, or crowdsourcing. Wow, sounds like a great deal. Do you have success stories of businesses that did this? Just tons. Take Apple, for example. The company adopted 
innovations in music players, cell phones, tablets, and laptops. They were among the first to introduce these technologies. So they became innovators who targeted early adopters. Actually, they started there, but I'll give it to you, yes. So this action thing really works? It does. But be aware that being an early adopter requires one to take action sooner or later. So the knowing doing gap is even shorter. It's almost too small to even see, my friend. And businesses use early adopters to their advantage? Indeed, they do. But even better, they get feedback back from early adopters. Some of the suggestions are incorporated into future versions of the product. Some people even pre-buy the new version before it's released. So trendy products are a lifestyle. You could put it that way for the early adopters, the thought leaders. And this is for any form of innovation? Yes, for any form of innovation. The same principle applies. This reminds me of procrastination. Have you ever heard about it? Oh yeah, we spoke about procrastination in an earlier episode. Yes, we did. Procrastination is delicious delaying or postponing something that needs to be done. It's not a virtue, it's a vice. I can't argue with that. So late adopters and laggards can qualify as procrastinators. There would be exceptions to that, wouldn't there? Sure. I suppose some of those might have a good reason, like being afraid of Jewish space lasers or something. (sighs) And it costs them lots of financial resources. It can. They end up getting whatever is left over. Which is stored where? Please, please. Let me Google that for you. Please. L-M-G-T-F-Y. Daniel, when you two are done with that joke, can you think of anything else we should be doing right now? And John is so glad you asked. Yes, I really am, even though I'm not AI. But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already, because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app, and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. As always, bueno, simple. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Can I simple that? Por supuesto. Of course. Just simple it. Please make sure your seat belts are fastened and your tray tables are in their upright position. And make sure simple is a verb like Google is a verb. Before the break, I asked you how we can get rich by following the principle of early adopters. Yes, I recall you were in a real rush to skip to the rich part. Later, you may thrash me about the head and shoulders for such impunity. But I really like UDT, so I won't do such a thing. That sounds like music to my ears. I'm glad you like it, even though you doubt a lot. Good investors are early adopters, too. Mm, you might want to amplify that. Off mic? Okay. Good investors are early adopters. Is that loud enough? No. Like that kind of amplification? I mean clarification. Ah, well, most good investors jump into investment opportunities when others are hesitating. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread, you know, said no successful investor ever. Now, just start investing. An example would be great. Okay, let's say there's an opportunity for real estate investment. Not pushing real estate here, you understand. It's just one of many good options. So use your imagination. People are buying land somewhere remote. There is no infrastructure yet. No roads, no electricity, no sewer, etc. In fact, nobody has even thought about building any of that stuff yet. Doesn't sound appealing to me. Now, you can either wait until people build all those things before you buy land, or you can go ahead and buy land now. Which option do you think is better? My goal would inform that, wouldn't it? But my gut says invest in the second option. You are exactly right about the goal. And your instinct about the second option is très, très magnifique. Most people want to wait for other people to take action. They are afraid to act first. Why do they think that way? Because they lack confidence 
confidence in their ability to succeed. They fear failure. Do they really? And poverty, I wonder? Do they fear that? Yes, they do. They're afraid of losing everything. Hmm, fear of failure. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yes, it does. We can send such people to our episodes 60 through 62, which are all about the topic of fear. Why do you prefer the investing early option? When you believe in the product, you watch for signs that the innovator also believes. Even though it doesn't look like much, soon it will appreciate as more people invest and infrastructure is built. Appreciate? What is that? It means that your money gets more valuable over time. Kind of like the opposite of inflation in a way. So you're saying that this land will increase in value? Yes, and you'll make a profit from it. Great. How long will it take for the value to grow? There's too many factors to know that without more research, but the short version is that you apply patience and you develop other MSIs so that this is not the highest priority. Wow. And it's not complicated. That's right. That is what this is all about. But remember, the earlier you invest, the bigger your profit will be. And the late adopters and laggards may end up buying from the early adopters at a higher price. Exact them all. So what should we do? Should we just sit back and wait for other people to invest? Or should we take action ourselves? It depends on how much risk you are willing to take. If you are not sure whether you have the skills to succeed, then maybe it's best to wait. Wait for what? And it's not to see if someone else takes action first. Great investors are often early adopters. Right. They don't wait around for others to take action. They jump in and start taking risks. Taking one for the team, it's sometimes called. Even though as early adopters, they consider the risks quite manageable. You're sure about that? I am sure. I'm there, mon ami. And you've no doubt practiced. I have practiced. Been patient and repeated over and over. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, Script Consultant, Open AI, Language Consultant, Ever Evolving, Media Expert, Favor Abbasi E.K., Psychologist, William James, Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot. Sound Designer, Goodly Amo Marconi, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Inspiration, Many Podcasts and Other Sources, and of course, Napoleon Hill. We also have websites, and you can subscribe to both podcasts and get ebooks and other great stuff. You can send us a video, audio, or text message, but of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. And those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, The artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, OpenAI and the online tone generator linked in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on podmatch.com and matchmaker.fm, where we consider guests and guesting on other pods. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams. The sound effects credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canoe CG, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Good Ink. Yes. That's his or her name. All on freesound.org. Paul.